behalf of the museum staff and board of directors, welcome to our 2021 History Makers Gala. I'm Lanisha Cassell, the African American Museum of Iowa's Executive Director, and I'm so happy to see all of you here this evening. It is my pleasure to kick off this exciting night where we get to honor the achievements of four distinguished statewide leaders. In a moment, I'm going to pass things over to our very capable MC, but before I do, I'd like to express how thankful I am to lead an organization that serves as a platform to showcase African American voices, our struggle, and our achievements. The museum's mission to educate communities across Iowa by sharing and making available authentic and relevant stories about African American history and culture is one we take seriously. In the midst of our shared chaos and uncertainty over the past 18 months, the museum has continued to make many strides since we last came together. And I'd like to share a couple of the highlights with you. One of those was the opening of our 2021 temporary exhibit. Unwavering 21st century activism explored contemporary social movements that affect African Americans, which opened at the height of last summer's local and national protests for justice. And less than one month ago, on September 10th, the museum opened its latest original exhibition, Mapping Exclusion, Redlining in Iowa. This exhibit looks at seven cities in Iowa that were subject to redline mapping and the long-term effects uh, the redlining had on these areas today. And over the past two years, the museum has been working with the city of Cedar Rapids flood control system leaders to improve our visitor experience as the new system is constructed. Amazingly, despite the pandemic and the derecho, the museum has seen close to 2,000 visitors since last fall. We've convened 24 virtual programs that garnered more than 16,000 views last year. Our Juneteenth celebration in 2020 was 100% virtual and extremely successful. But this year, we were able to convene our Juneteenth celebration with a hybrid of in-person and virtual events that included a live stream Black History Challenge trivia event with local middle school students in a partnership with the African American Youth Think Tank. Our festival was in-person and celebrated at Nouveau City Market right here in Cedar Rapids. And we wrapped up our week-long celebration with a panel discussion entitled, Does the Color of My Skin Really Matter? Featuring Dr. Simon Estes and in partnership with the Cedar Rapids Opera Theater. And at the end of 2020, we unveiled the museum's brand new logo, a sleek amalgam of cultural patterns and forward progress. With community input, our team worked with the graphic designer to create a new image for the museum that represents who we are now and our vision for the future. We hope you like it as much as we do. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce our MC for this evening. I met this local professional and active community member during many of her visits to the museum programs over the years. Marie Hancock has called Iowa home since January 2013. She graduated from Utah Valley University College of Business, where she focused on finance and accounting. Marie is a first-generation real estate agent, fourth-generation landowner and entrepreneur with over 15 years of combined experience in loan financing, budget analysis, real estate investing, and customer service. She sits on several committees for the local and national association of realtors. Marie's passion is to make room for underserved groups of at the wealth table through commercial and residential real estate. When she's not educating the community, she's out serving the community by donating time and financial resources to several nonprofit organizations locally and nationally. Marie is also the proud mother of two wonderful and travel hungry children, Dominique and Lucas. A beloved wife and unapologetically a disciple of Christ. Her priorities in life are God, family, real estate, food, and community. Please welcome our MC for this evening to the stage, Marie Hancock. Thank you so much, Lanisha. C'est mon plaisir d'être ici avec vous ce soir. Et toute cette réunion va se passer en français. Donc si vous ne comprenez pas, je suis bien désolée. Lanisha, what did you tell me? Everyone spoke French in here. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll be serious for the rest of the night, I promise. <laughs> It is my pleasure to serve as your MC for this evening. Truly a pleasure, mm -hmm. an honor. I'm humbled, I am excited, and I just cannot wait for the remainder of this program to unfold. And I hope you will enjoy it as much as I do. 
Please join me in thanking Lanisha, the museum team, board of directors, event sponsors, event volunteers, and the gala committee for organizing this wonderful evening. I would like to add to that that I'm also thankful for you all for showing up because without you in this audience, there would be no gala. So thank you. Before we get started, I would like everyone to pull out their cell phones. And we are going to do the cool and hip thing that is, you know, the norm right now. Check in on your social media platforms. I'm serious. I'm watching. Check in, check in, check in. Let them know we're here. There's a gentleman on table nine that's not really good at following orders. <laughs> oh, seriously. If you would now, thank you so much for those of, of, of us that were able to check in. If you would now, please put your cell on silent or vibrate for the rest of the program. As a reminder, and in the interest of everyone's well-being and peace of mind, masks are required throughout this evening. And I'm standing here with one covering my mouth and muffling. <laughs> Unless you're seated at your assigned table, eating or drinking, please keep them on. Um, thank you to Unity Point for providing complimentary masks and sanitizers. Tonight's history makers were nominated by their peers and selected from a distinguished pool of many worthy candidates. Michael Allen, Diedrich Doolin, Pastor Diane Koger, and Negus Rudison Imhotep have all changed our communities. And they have also affected the lives of others, many, many others. They joined the ranks of all previously honored trailblazers, agents of change, legacy makers, and role models all around us. I am excited that we get to honor them tonight. Of course, we're also here tonight to support the African American Museum of Iowa's mission to preserve exhibit and teach the African-American history of Iowa. For more than 28 years, the museum has been providing educational resources across the state. Being here tonight means you believe in the work of the museum just as much as I do. So I invite you to take advantage of the donation envelopes at your table before you leave tonight. That's the polite way for what my husband say. Is this the part where you tell everyone to open their purses? Yes. Purses, wallet, everything open. Tonight is a night of giving. I'm watching. I am sure you've had the opportunity to explore a sampling of the museum store during the reception in the atrium. Store items will be available immediately following the, the um, award presentation tonight and throughout the evening. You'll also be able to continue to purchase Chances to Play, our game of chance, heads, or tail. Many of you have played before, and for those of you who haven't played before, you are in for a treat. This is the only time as adult that you get to be inappropriate with your hand, and it's okay. So, I hope we all can participate. Um, there is a chance, I would like to let you know, of winning a $500 Visa gift card, courtesy of past museum board member, Rudy Sims and his wife, Veronica. And you can purchase chances until 6.45 p.m. tonight. And if you are still purple envelopes available, there are still purple envelopes uh, available, if you are still purple envelopes. Are you purple envelopes? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Nerves. Okay. 
You have time to pick up your contribution amount until the end of the evening. That's what I was trying to say. And before we begin dinner tonight, I would like to invite Yvette Creighton, who is the Senior Manager, Talent, Inclusion, and Diversity with Transamerica to come forward for our invocation. Good evening. My name is Yvette Creighton, the Senior Manager of Talent, Inclusion, and Diversity at Transamerica. And it is a pleasure and honor to share with you a few words of invocation today. History, despite its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived. But if faced with courage, need not be lived again. Maya Angelou. My beautiful friends and colleagues of this great state of Iowa, let us take a moment to reflect on where we've come, where we are, and where we are going as we partake in this meal today. We reflect on where we've come for today's progress, victories, achievements, and triumphs can't be fully appreciated without remembering the warriors of yesterday who stood strong, endured pain and hardship, and fought the fight on our behalf. Remembering where we've come girds us up and gives us insight into where we must do and what must be done to forge ahead. Let us not forget. It is important that we reflect on where we are and to be present in the present. And while progress has been made, we still press toward a better tomorrow. The mountaintop seems far reaching, but we must not seal our lips and close our minds with satisfaction of where we are today. For there is still so much work to do, so much of our voices yet to be heard, and so much to put our minds to. Remembering where we are reminds us that we can't become complacent. Moments are fleeting and time is always ticking. Let us work while it is yet day. We must be compelled to reflect on where we are going. Aspirations for equity and equality are only aspirations without plans and without action. We must desire with passion to continue the momentum of those who came before us in an effort to turn the tide to be steadfast and unmovable and to continue in the change, in changing course of our history. Remembering where we are going empowers us to mobilize our vision, to roll up our sleeves and unite as one in our efforts to get there. Let us be moved into collective action. The unfortunate pain of our country's past has pushed us to make progress. The honorees of today are evidence of that. Today, we honor those who are history makers, trailblazers, removing obstacles and barriers so that those of us behind them can grace the trail. Change agents, those who without being prompted, persuaded, or prodded, create change for the betterment of our collective community. Legacy makers whose impact and influence lives on well beyond their years, and role models, individuals with upstanding character and accomplishments worth admiring and emulating. Join me in reflecting on where we've come, where we are, and where we are going as we honor yet another set of amazing individuals who have dared to make history. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for reminding us of how far we've come, yet how much work there is, to, there is still to do. Bless this meal, bless your people, as we pay honor to those who've led lasting impact on our lives and in our community. Amen. Hello, wonderful people. While you enjoy
I love you. Don't tell my husband. <laughs> While you're enjoying your dinner, table three got my vote for most attentive attendees tonight. <laughs> While you're enjoying your dinner, please welcome our heads or tail experts to the stage. They're going to be sharing instructions for this exciting game of chance. The game is sponsored by museum board member Rudy Shims and his wife Veronica. The prize you'll be vying for tonight is $500 Visa gift card. And if you think you don't need it, you can donate it back to Marie. Our game experts tonight are Jamarco Clark, Ben Hoover, Anthony Betters Jr., and Kristen Parrott. Please help me give them a round of applause. tickets but beads. So I guess I'll start by explaining the game because I'm sure there's people in the room that, that have never played heads or tails before. At, at least this version maybe. So the way this version works is it's like a typical heads or tails game with a twist. So we'll have someone up here they're gonna flip a, flip a coin like heads, tails, just like normal. But the difference is anyone who, who has purchased, not purchased, but made a donation for a set of beads, we'll all stand up. And you're gonna call, do I, wanna, do I think it's gonna be heads? Or do I think it's gonna be tails? <laughs> until, the last, until the last man or woman is standing, and that last man or woman who is standing with the final beads will be awarded the $500 gift, gift card. So if you're interested in participating and have yet to purchase your set of beads or sets of beads, because you can't get more than one chance. They're $10 per set, or $25 for three, or you can just throw a hundo out there and, uh, and we'll, we'll make a deal. So any, is there anyone interested? Please raise your hand. Jamarco, Anthony. If you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. All right, if you have a bead, please stand up. If you have beads or multiple, please stand up. All right, uh, Anthony, Kristen, and Ben, we gotta make sure we keep an eye out. So this is how it works, so I'm gonna flip a coin. If you can hear me clap once, if you can hear me clap twice, can you turn the mic up a little bit? It's a very low and deep voice. Who's in charge of the mic? All right, so we're gonna flip the coin. If it's heads, so before I flip the coin, I'll give you the opportunity to make your designation. So if you wanna go heads, my great friends will tell you what you'll do, or show you what you'll do. If it's heads, put your hands on your head. If you're going tails, you put your hands behind your back or on your bum. Don't touch anyone else, only touch your own body parts, all right? That's very important. All right, so when we get to about, we usually come on the stage, but when we get to about 10, we'll bring it to the front, and then we'll keep going until we're out of chances. So, Kristen, if you, where are you at, Kristen? I, I may need you to go around and be our accountability chief. So that if they if they lose their bead, we want to grab those. So go around and collect the beads. So we're gonna get started. And Anthony and Ben, you two watch as well. And we'll get you wanna flip? There you go. And you just tell me what it is. Let's do it. Alright, actually, nope, that, that one doesn't count. Go ahead, make your designation. Go ahead, pick. Everyone pick? Alright, five, four, three, two, one. 
Tails. Who else? Author. All right, so if you have, if you have multiple beads, you can stay standing. If you have multiple beads, you can stay standing. Yep, so you have to sit down. So for those of you, for those of you who had your hands on your heads, you were wrong. Those of you who had your hands on your toes, you were correct, so you get to stay up. All right, we're gonna go again. Get your designation. We lost a lot of people on that one. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Tails. The group is getting smaller. The group is getting smaller. Can it be three in a row? Can it be three in a row? All right, five, four, three, 2.5, 2, 1, go. Tails. All right, we're going to go a little faster now. All right, go ahead and pick. Will it be four in a row? Hey, I promise there's a heads on this thing. I promise. There is a heads. There is a heads. All right, here we go. Five, four. Three, two, one. Heads. He can't. Yes, he can. All right, let's come to the front. I think we're small enough to come to the front. Come on up to the front. If you're still standing, come on up to the front. We have the social distance, but come on up. Line up across the front. All right, spread out a little bit, spread out. Keep some distance. All right, we got everybody up. All right, spread out a little bit, spread out a little bit, spread out, all right. All right, here we go. Five, get your designation. Four, switch it if you want to. I would go ahead to, I'm just saying, I would go ahead to. Three, someone should go ahead. Two, one, go. Tails. Sorry, I led you astray, my apologies. Did you, did, hey, did you lose them all? She shouldn't pass them All right, we're going again, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Tails. Tails. All right, we're going. All right, let's bring it in. Move this way a little bit. Yep, you can lose one. Keep going this way. I think the Mount Mercy president might win. Mount Mercy president. All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Heads. Oh, All right, let's get smaller. We're down to three. We're down to three. All right, let's go. Here we go. Five, four, three, two. Where are you going? Hold on. Where are you going, President Ellison? You going behind the back? All right. Two, one, go. Heads. We have a winner. We have a winner. Congratulations. I'll get your card to you and we can redeem that. Thank you all for participating. We appreciate it.
That was fun. That was fun. Thank you so much for leading Head Hotel, Jamarco, Ben, and Kristen. Congratulations to the winner. And please don't forget to redeem your redemption certificate to the museum pop-up store in the atrium after the event. Before we present this year's honorees, I would like to take a moment to recognize our past history maker honorees. Their names are listed on the screen and in your program. Please stand if you are a past history maker honoree. for your contribution and thank you for standing. At this time, at this time, I ask you to help me thank our gala gold sponsors, Cargill, Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust, Bankers Trust, the coolest table around, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Mercy Medical Center, United Fire Group, and Green State Credit Union. Thank you are also in order for our silver sponsors. Alliance Energy, Country Financial, True North Companies, University of Iowa College of Education, University of Iowa TP College of Business, University of Iowa Stanley Museum of Art, and Grinnell College. Of course, our gratitudes are not complete unless we also thank our generous bronze and table sponsors whose names are listed inside your program and on the screen. This event would not be possible without the support of all of our sponsors and without your presence here tonight. So please give them all and yourselves a round of applause. Getting closer, getting closer to the moment we've all been waiting for. So, what makes a history maker? History makers are outstanding individuals who have proven by their actions to have modified the course of history. They have imparted their knowledge, they have impacted our communities in, and the communities in which they live. Recipients are trailblazers in their field, change agents in their communities, role models for all people. They have also left legacies that transcend time. When I think about those being honored this evening, I feel truly inspired. We are gathered this evening to celebrate the lives and accomplishments of four such individuals tonight. Michael Allen, Diedrich Doolin, Negus Ridison Imhotep, and Pastor Diane Koger. Lanisha, Mrs. Humble, please join me on the stage to present them with their well-deserved awards.
Tonight's first history maker is Michael Allen. Michael Allen began wrestling at the age of 12 in McKinstry Middle School in Waterloo. I feel like I need to catch my breath now because the list of his accomplishments are long. <laughs> he continued wrestling at East High School and while enrolled there at the University of Northern Iowa, he graduated from University of Northern Iowa with a BA in Health and Physical Education and a master's degree in school administration. He obtained employment with the Waterloo Community School District in 1972, and he started wrestling officiating. Michael Allen retired from the Waterloo School District in 2008. He became the first and only African-American wrestling official in the state of Iowa to ever officiate at the state wrestling tournament. He has officiated 20 Iowa high school wrestling state tournaments today and was voted the outstanding Iowa wrestling official of the year three times, not once, not twice, three times. He has officiated at 15 college level NCAA division one tournament 10 NCAA Division II tournaments, and five NCAA Division III tournaments, five NAIA national tournaments, and three national junior college tournaments. Mike Allen has been inducted into the following halls of fame. Watch if I don't trip or say something in French. The East High School Hall of Fame, the Ring of Honor Football Hall of Fame, the Ellsworth Football Hall of Fame, the Midlands Hall of Fame from Northwestern University, the Glen Brand Wrestling Hall of Fame, the FILA, Fédération Internationale Lutte Associée. I'm not making that up. <laughs> the FILA International Wrestling Hall of Fame, the Iowa Wrestling Official Hall of Fame and the Nation Wrestling Hall of Fame in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Please join me in congratulating him. Say, but I'm going to ask you to participate in something. So be aware, be aware. But I want you to know how I got here. How I got here, it's, a, it's something that you need to understand. So here we go. My parents, my parents, Betty Allen and Molly Allen, done a lot of things for the kids. They, de they decided everything that we did. We had a drug situation in our home. And I'm not talking about the drugs. I'm talking about they took us everywhere. <laughs> they drug us everywhere. <laughs> so understand that now, understand. Don't go out of here saying, well, uh, uh, Mike Allen, uh, you got drugs and everything else in this family. <laughs> our parents, our parents had, I just don't understand how my mother and how my father handled six of us, but they did. They drug us to Bible study, they took uh, Ferguson Field, they, they everywhere. We couldn't go anywhere. And, but what they did, what they did, they made sure, they made sure that they loved us. Mother became a cheerleader, 
Shadi became the person of discipline. And then all of a sudden, remember the man named Martin Luther King? Remember him? Now, she keeps telling me, us about Martin Luther King with that what dream. Yeah, got to dream. And he, she put that out there. And in the meantime, this guy from Chicago named Brock, and Brock said, you can do what? You can do anything. So there was a whole lot of things that my mother and my father gave us. So remember this, I did not do this. My mother and my father did this. Well, at this time, I want to welcome table number nine. <laughs> we got uh, Sedora. We have my son, Victor, and my daughter. I don't know where he is half the time. I just don't know what's going on. I, I just don't understand him. And we have Stuart Carter and my daughter-in-law, Tina, Gina. So I'm, I'm so glad I got this. Um, I have one more minute left. <laughs> oh shoot! I, okay, I. You know something? I got I got the notice in May. In May, you know right? In May. Now how do you expect it to somebody to do something in May, and then I October for five minutes? <laughs> Am I right? That that, that, that that does not make very, very much sense. <laughs> but since I know and I'm going to respect the next candidates that coming up here, and you did a great job. Can we give these people a ground? <laughs> so as I close, now, now listen to me now here. Now, when I close, don't go up them doors and say, God dang, my Allen family had all kinds of drugs. <laughs> don't do that. They drug us. And I'm a, I, I would demonstrate, okay, on somebody what I mean. They meant pull them, pull, pull, where you going, what you gonna do, and everything. That's the kind of family that I, I grew up up. And my mother was very, very, very good in regards to getting things done. And so I just want to thank you, and I will be giving a donation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you better clap. <laughs> so thank you for giving, thank you for thinking about the man that's, how do I say this, 71 years old, and also my, the, my mother had, uh, put together this, um, what was it, a civic club when she was pregnant with me. And it's still, it's still 71 years they are doing it in Waterloo. Thank you. Oh. Need to make sure I have a tissue here if anybody else is gonna speak like him. Our next history maker is Diedrich Doolin. See? That's what happens when the name precedes the man. Diedrich Doolin is a dedicated advocate for social justice, civil rights, young people. He has been involved in fighting for others since his elementary school days. Diedrich Doolin is heavily involved in the Cedar Rapids community and has received many appointments to leadership positions. He's currently president of the Cedar Rapids branch of the NAACP, secretary of the Iowa-Nebraska NAACP State Conference. He's an interim president of the Iowa African American Hall of Fame, inductee in the Iowa African American Hall of Fame in 2015. He's the chair of the I'll Make Me a World in Iowa. 
I love that title. Black History Game Show and co-chair of the Education Day, Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church head usher, Sunday school teacher, an assistant church clerk and vice president trustee board, president's late man's, and these are just a few of the many honors that Dietrich too has received. Most recently, he was appointed in June 2021 to the Cedar Rapids Citizen Review Board by the Cedar Rapids City Council. Most importantly, he is blessed to be an ambassador and personal representative of Jesus Christ, my very favorite title for him. Please join me in congratulating Diedrich Tulin as he comes to the stage. Not just for me, and not just for the honorees tonight, but for, for the purpose of history. I would love to take time to tell you history is spelled H-I-S-T-O-R-Y. His story, it depends on who's telling the story, and history has been not properly presented. So I would love to give you a history lesson on that, but they would pull my coat. So I just want to say, I'm just a servant. You know, and you know, I am very humbled by this honor, but I'm just a servant. My, my father was president of the Quaker Oats Union. So, you know, and he, he fought for people all the time. My mother was a longtime secretary of A. Philip Randolph. I don't know, some of you don't know anything about A. Philip Randolph, do you? But I'm just saying, so I didn't have a choice but to have some genes that said, you gotta help people. That's what you do. You know what I'm saying? My grandmother from Arkansas, my grandmother from Arkansas taught me some things and I used to listen to her all the time. But my grandmother told me, she said, I want you to let people know that you are a small piece of leather, but you are well put together. <laughs> so whenever somebody says something about my size, how big I was, you know, I let them know I'm a small piece of leather, but I'm well put together. That's what my grandmother taught me. See, we don't, we don't respect and appreciate our, our, our parents and our grandparents like we used to. You know, I went to a program in Oklahoma where, where every kid had to get up and state the names of his grandparents on both sides. You know, we need to, we need to bring some of that stuff back. We need to bring some of that back. But due to time restrictions, I don't have the time to tell you everything that I'd love to tell you and all the people that have been helpful for me. But you know, I have, I, I have, um, you know, my, my brother taught me, my brother Aaron taught me that you can learn something from anyone, from your parents, from your children, from your siblings, from your neighbors, from people that don't even like you, and from a fool, if nothing else but how not to be foolish. You know, so, you know, sometimes we don't, we don't listen to a lot of people. My, your children can even teach you something. You know one of the things my children taught me? Patience. Oh my God. Do you need patience when you deal with your children? And you have to adapt, you know, and you, and you really got to learn how to change because you know one of the things about children, they ain't the same. They don't respond to the same thing. You can tell one to do something and they'll do it. You tell another to do the same thing and they ain't thinking about you. You know what I'm saying? That's just the reality. You can learn something from anybody. You know, if you stand at the road and, 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 you, and you pull up and you see a wino standing on the side of the road because you don't like winos and he tells you the road's out but you go and, and crash because you didn't pay attention to him. Sometimes you, you gotta pay attention to who, what, and where, because sometimes you don't know. But I gotta tell you, I got a whole bunch of people that, that helped me coming up. See, I, 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 I was raised in a village that was more than a village. I mean, Dr. Percy Harris, Nelson Evans, Miss Moody, Miss Viola Gibson, Ms. Sherm, Mr. Sherman Brown, Bill Hood, Virg Gooding Jr., Hugh Gibson, Lietta Reed, Emmett Carr, Leo Griggs, Betty Williams, Ollie Gibson Sr., Juan Cortez, that's just to name a few, because I could go all day just telling you all the people that impacted my life. 
You know, because there are, you know, sometimes we don't realize that there are people out there that impact you and you didn't know it until later on. You didn't know, you know, you thought, well, they're trying to tell me to do something that I don't really want to do. But sometimes you learn what they tell you was right. Pay attention. You know, I want you to think about this. You know, you, we all in school? You know what kind of school y'all in? We are all in Earth School. You know what Earth School is? Earth School is living. None of us were the age that we are doing what we do now. We didn't know what it took to live in this age right now. That's Earth School. And you know, you can either grow and adapt in Earth School, or what can you do? Die. So, so die. You, can, you, you, know, you don't have to die right away. You can just start dying because you don't pay attention to learn. Did you get the lesson? You know, I've heard people say we can fall down seven times and get back up, but if you don't learn the lesson, if you keep walking down the same street, falling in the same hole, you didn't learn the lesson. Did you learn the lesson? I hope you learned the lesson because you are in earth school. We are all servants. I'm just a servant. And I'm just a servant. And I got the skills to be a servant naturally. But you know what? We need more people that want to help people. You know, if you see somebody that don't have a smile, give them one of yours because they truly need a smile. That's where I come from. I just want to let you know that nothing is going to happen today that God and I or you can't handle unless we put God first. As long as we put God first, we can handle anything in this world. Anything. So that's what we got to teach our children. You can be whatever you want to be if you work for it, if you do what you need to do. This is Earth School. Did you learn the lesson? I hope you did. Thank you for this honor. God bless you, and thank you for being here. God bless. Thank you so much. Um, next history maker is Negis Rudison Imhotep. I debated long and hard whether I was going to say his name in Latin, in Spanish, or in French. I'll tell you. But we decided on Nikis Ridison Imhotep. He is the academic and workforce coordinator at Urban Dreams and the deferred expulsion case manager for the Des Moines Public Schools. In these roles, he has connected several of Central Iowa's top employers with highly skilled, untapped talent, assisted hundreds of marginalized Central Iowans in securing gainful employment, and successfully advocated on behalf of more than 50 students who faced expulsion from the Des Moines School District. Negus recently attained a ro new role as an executive board member with the Greater Des Moines Habitat for Humanity. Negus is also a sought after orator and community ally, having served as an executive board member for the Iowa Human Rights Board. He's also a past chair and commissioner of the Iowa Commission on African American Status. In 2015, Negus launched Rudison Consultancy Group, LLC to offer cultural community network advising and cultural competency training to agencies and organizations across the region. Negus is an autodidactic African historiographer who has conducted lectures in numerous cities throughout the United States. He holds a bachelor's degree in liberal arts with concentration in political science for, from Excelsior College he has a master's degree in public administration from Norwich University, and is currently writing his dissertation for a doctorate in business administration with a concentration in human resources from North Central University. Please join me in congratulating the very accomplished man, Negus Ridison Imhotep, as he comes to the stage.
Out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutches of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Even though I've been bludgeoned, my head is bloody but unbound. Beyond this place of raft and tear looms but the horror of the shade. And yet the menace of the year finds it should find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Invictus. I gotta do this for my brothers. <laughs> oh! Mm. Oh my goodness, uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here today and to receive an award such as this. I first just like to give honor to the creative force of the universe. I thank God for what he's done in my life. I heard individuals say about how they got here. From what I found out, I got here, my ancestors got here in different ways. Some of my ancestors came here on the bottoms of ships. Some of my ancestors came here uh, riding first class on the ship. <laughs> but yet I'm here. Uh, my heritage is being born and raised in Houston, Texas, but I have deep Iowa roots. Uh, my grandfather on my mother's side, my maternal grandfather came to Iowa in 1895. My grandmother got here in 1910 on that maternal side. My, my grandfather on my paternal side came to Iowa in 1907, and my grandmother on the paternal side got here in 1917. I have deep Iowa roots. I thank God for the roots. I thank God for the roots. I just wish I had the opportunity where my parents could see this right now. I remember talking to my dad before his demise back in 2000. I was going through the ordination in the Church of God in Christ. And he said, son, what you doing in Iowa? I said, well, Dad, I'm here with Mom now, you know, and trying to help here in Iowa. He said, I said, well, Dad, you remember, you from Iowa. <laughs> he said, yeah, I'm from Iowa. <laughs> that little man was something else, but I thank God for my dad. I know uh, growing up in Houston and, and looking at my father being a businessman and growing up in in the segregated South, I miss and I love the camaraderie that the black community once had. We had thriving businesses, thriving businesses, doctors, lawyers, cleaners, auto parts stores, oh, we had thriving businesses. I remember a gentleman from Iowa, Mr. Quentin Meese. Some of you might know him. Some of you older people might know Quentin Meese. He used to be with the Crocker YMCA in, in Des Moines. But he owned Riverside Bank in Houston, Texas, the oldest black bank west of the Mississippi River. And that was the first place my dad put some money in my hand and said, boy, you put your money in this bank. I remember the love that I had from those teachers that looked like me, that was pushing me and telling us, all these little chocolate-faced children, that you can achieve. You can do anything if you put your mind to it. I remember the love that I received from my mother as she was an executive with the Houston Area Urban League. I had the opportunity to meet Barbara Jordan, Mickey Leland, uh, uh, Ron Brown, I had the opportunity to see these people and meet these people, and these people were influences in my life. And I'm here to say today I just thank the Creator for what He's done. 
I am a wounded healer because I've been scarred in this society. I'm standing here before you, a two-time convicted felon who's about to get a PhD. When I looked at this research that I'm doing right now, I looked and I found out that there are 48,000 legal sanctions in this law here in this nation that deter the mobility of anyone that is a carceral citizen. I have bachelor's, master's degrees, I had a license to teach, but the schools wouldn't hire me to teach because I smoked some weed 27 years ago. But when their kids are in trouble and then they can't handle them and the teachers don't know what to do with them, they send them to the brother with the nappy head and the nappy beard. They don't want to be proactive. The school to prison pipeline is real. Past three years I've been dealing with deferred exposure in the Des Moines public schools. In these past three years, I had three children that were killed from gunshot wounds. We had children that went through the program and received their diplomas and graduated. Yet, I had kids that received their diplomas and graduated and seven days later, now they're in prison during 17 years. In America. If we look at this carceral nation that we live in, 41% of everybody that's locked up in America looks like me. The United States only represents 5% of the global population, but the United States owns 25% of everybody on this planet that's locked up. Fact, not fiction. 95% of everybody that goes in will be released one day. And today, these people come out with all these obstacles, all these barriers in their way. And then they tell you to try to live. Oh, I'm telling you today, we need to advocate for something new. We need to advocate for a change. The percentage of black men in America that are locked up today need to be a vulnerable class or a protective class, like the 1990 uh, Disabilities Act for uh, American Disabilities Act. Because everywhere you go, I'm finishing my dissertation right now, I'm, I'm looking at the conclusion of the thematic analysis and I, I'm putting the final touches on what I see and I see that we have laws that don't mean nothing. 1964, Title VII Civil Rights Act. 1964, I remember my mom and dad was just happy in Harlem because no more discrimination and employment. 1964. Okay. What are we doing? What are we saying? And how can we teach our children if we have people telling us we can't tell them the whole story? I said the whole story. I'm talking about the truth. We had legislators in this state that created a law and said that we can't tell them, oh, that's divisive. I'm going to tell you about something. I love Iowa because my mama was born here. I love Iowa because my daddy was born here. But I'm going to tell you something about Iowa that, that a lot of people don't want to talk about. In the words of the late Malcolm X, he said, as long as you were south of the Canadian border, you're south.
1979, me and my younger brother, I'm a, I'm a freshman in college at New Mexico State. I played football, I was a running back, still hold a Texas high school record for most yards, ever rushed in one game. 599 yards on 32 carries and seven touchdowns. We wanted to play pool against our grandfather, and my grandfather was a pool shark. He played against Willie Moscone, he played against Minnesota Fast, right there in Marshalltown, Iowa. Okay? And I said, Dad, we want to play Grandpa. You weren't telling us about how good Grandpa is. He said, Here, boy. He threw the keys to me. There's Lincoln. Continental Versailles. No, Lincoln Versailles. And he, and he gave me his credit card. And, and my birth name is Claire Rudison, but I, I tend not to use that no more. He gave me his credit card, and me and my brother got our bags together. And me and my little brother, I'm 19, my little brother is about 15. And we drive across the country from Houston, Texas, and get to Marshalltown, Iowa. I'm stopped at the light in Marshalltown. All of a sudden, I saw a police light go on behind me. Police got out, stuck the gun right in my face. My little brother said that the gun barrel was touching behind his ear. He's 15 years old now, okay? Police said, show me your driver's license, your registration, and proof of insurance. Don't you make a funny move. I said, sir, I want to live. And I got that lesson that my daddy and mama told me when I was a child. You keep your hands up on the wheel. And you talk to the person. And he said, give me the proof of insurance. You got any contraband, any firearm? I said, no, sir, I don't have anything. I said, he said, well, give me that stuff. I said, what's well, in the glove compartment? Can I reach for it, sir? He said, don't make a crazy move. I said, sir, I want to live. I reached out and got the registration and gave him the license and proof of insurance. And he looked at it. He said, Claire Rudison, you must be junior. I went to school with your daddy. That wasn't funny. Y'all can laugh at it, but that wasn't funny. Nothing about that was funny. He said, well, your family live over there on Oliver Street. I, I know where my grandmother and grandfather live. They got in their car and drove on. I get to the house and I'm in tears. Grandpa, Grandpa! My little brother, Grandpa, Grandma, look, look. I said, they did this. And he said, what you gonna do? What you gonna do, Grandpa? He said, don't worry about it, son. I said, but Grandpa, he said, I, I, son, I said, don't worry about it. He said, I got to live here. I'm gonna tell you. Sam Cook said, change gonna come. It's time for change. Thank you for this award. PTSD, and we have not been in a war, but it's hard to follow that coherently, so forgive me for the rest of the night if I'm a little off. Um, our next history maker and last of the evening is Pastor Diane Kohler. She's the senior pastor of Second Baptist Church in Ottawa. She's the owner of Amazing Panda Learning Academy, LLC, 
in Clyde. She recently wrote a book entitled A Clergy Woman Standing Alone in My Own Words. After moving to Des Moines from Chicago, Pastor Coger worked for the West Des Moines schools for over 15 years. And later, she became a member of Corinthian Baptist Church in the Des Moines. In, Des Moines. in 2018, Pastor Coger made history in becoming an Iowa Trailblazer as the first African-American female Baptist pastor in the state of Iowa. She obtained an associate degree in early childhood education from the Des Moines Area Community College. She's a Christian counselor, mentor, and she has a heart to serve others. She's also received several certificates in ministry and educational studies. She continued to advance her education at the National School of Theology. Pastor Diane Coger is married to Deacon Joseph Coger Sr. Together, they're a blended family with nine children and 12 grandchildren. Please join me in congratulating Pastor Diane Coger as she comes to the stage. struggled a little bit coming up there my voice goes in and out when the weather changes so my mother always said to me go in third gear and that is to give God all the glory and to use your voice that God has given you on the inside I want to say I thank God for being here tonight I thank God for all of you that are here today especially what we've just been going through from year to year, day to day, month to month. We just give God all the glory and all the honor. Thank God for my church family, the Second Baptist Church in Natama, Iowa, and my family, my pastor, Jonathan B. Whitfield, that is here represented by Deacon McGee. I just thank God for everyone that is here table 40. I thank God for you being in the back, man, the bells. But truly, I thank God for my children being here. I thank God for my mother. This, what I'm doing tonight and, and, and allowing this opportunity to come up here to speak, you know, I, I was a little teary-eyed throughout the day trying to figure out, Lord, what do I say? And God took me back to that moment when I got a phone call from a week ago, well, a week into um, hearing that my mother was sick and then her sister was sick. And during that time, it was a COVID season. So I desired to go home to see what was going on, to visit with my family. And being a essential business owner, I couldn't leave the state of Iowa. Parents really needed me. So I called my mom and I talked to her and she says, you got to keep going. You know how we do it. You're strong. And I began to think on her, those words that she had spoken in my life. And I thought about being an African-American woman that we have to stand for something or we'll fall for nothing. And one of the things I called back and I talked to my sister and my brothers and they said, well, we have bad news, but good news. And I said, I want the good news first. Well, the good news is that your mother has transitioned to be with the Lord. She died of COVID. And then a week later, my aunt died of COVID, which would have been the next person to go to as a female, strong woman of God in the family. But when you saw her, you saw the other one. Couldn't leave, had to do a video funeral. And then a week later, her brother, baby brother passed, and then another uncle. So I began to become comical because in our family, 
we laugh, we enjoy, we have fun because we know to transition from this life that there is a present life. Not an absent life, but a present life. And God spoke to me, he says, devastation is education. And when God spoke that to me, I said, Lord, I need to understand your words. Right now, I'm feeling some type of way. My mother said, you have to keep going. She says, I'm going to be there with you in August. We're going to be there. We're going to celebrate you come up in October. And yet, she's not here. And so the Lord spoke to me. He says, write the words of your mother in a book. I've never written a book. Don't, I, I, that's not me. But then God had me to sit down in a room and I began to hear his voice and he allowed me to interact with my mother in a spiritual way that she reminded me of what it meant to be a change agent in the world. How to become the change, how to live the life of change, speak change. And I began to write all the words that she had spoken to me about women and being strong women. And what she has spoke about how we need to always be that person that stands for righteous. Well, I, I like Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks is one of my favorite, and she's a change agent in my life that I've always enjoyed. Growing up as a little girl in Chicago, Illinois, I always desired, I walked with, you know, walked with the different ones that were walking in leadership. Malcolm X, all the different, they just went for it and their desire was to make change. I was always fascinated with everyone, Jesse Jackson. I was very fascinated with history makers, people that were change agents, that were doing things different, that were making their community better. And that's my heart, is that we be the change that need to be seen. And so I went and I looked up some points, some quotes that I love of Rosa Parks. And one is, I had no idea that history was being made. I was just tired of giving up. That meant a lot to me as I looked through it and I, and I quoted over to myself. And I thought about how being the first female Baptist pastor in the state of Iowa, and sometimes I'm still not really recognized, I'm more so a sister. But that's okay because what I've learned is that when you hold a title, when you become a change agent, that that's not your reward, that's your work. And then I also learned that when God allows you to move forward and to embrace his pulpit, that is a privilege, that's an honor. That's not a place to embrace a title. There's work to be done. People are hurting, people are crying. And we have to be a change agent. And so I'm really thankful for the African American Museum for the opportunity to, to be able to stand here before you. I really encourage you to sow a seed. I want to say to all of my family and friends that are here, my birthday is tomorrow. Instead of a gift, sow into the museum. Sow into the museum. You know, my husband might say, well, I've already got some gifts, but you can do extra. Because we, I enjoy 30 days of birthday. <laughs> so I thank God so much for all of you. And I just want to say to the women, stand for something or you will fall for nothing. Rosa Parks said, I had no idea. And I had no idea that I was even making history. All I was tired of is going back and forth to Ottumwa, Iowa, a three hour round trip, and seeing a church that I love with my heart and my soul, not getting their needs met. And so I began to talk to God and I said, Lord, I'll take the challenge. And my mother said to me, keep it moving. So I wanna to say to you, thank you tonight for this opportunity is truly a blessing. Have a great night.
feel so inspired. You know, feel so inspired, truly, by the stories, by the achievement of these four individuals. What a well-deserved honor. You know, oftentimes when you are having this type of recognition, everything, everything seems so mm, rehearsed. Everything seems so surreal almost. But to hear these stories, relatable stories, I hope, and uh, transformative stories, they, they really tell me one thing. Live life the best you can every single day and every minute of every day. And I hope you are just as in inspired as I am. Congratulations again to all of our honorees tonight. And what an amazing group of trailblazers. As we end this evening, I'd like to call African American of Iowa Board of Director, President, Mrs. Nancy Humbles, and Vice President Jamarco Clark for closing remarks. Marie did a great job tonight. Let's give another round of applause. On behalf of my fellow directors, I'd like to also extend another congratulations to our 2021 honorees who have made an indelible impact on their communities across Iowa. Let's give them another round of applause. And I'd also like to say thank you to our generous sponsors and thank you to everyone else for joining us this evening. Your continued support of the museum mission to preserve, exhibit, and teach Iowa's African American heritage means so much to us. The museum is a wonderful place, and we are blessed to be able to share the rich African-American history and stories this state holds. It is an honor and privilege to serve on the board, and I am thankful for your support that you all provide to the museum to make this service possible. This time, I'll pass it over to board president, Ms. Nancy Humbles, who will make final remarks. Thank you, Jamarco, and thank you all for joining this celebration of excellence. What an extraordinary class of history makers. This is my second year serving as the president of the board, and it continues to be my pleasure to be part of an ongo the ongoing success of the African American Museum. As you heard during the program, the museum exceeds expectations year after year, making a difference in the lives of those who experience the resources the museum has to offer. We can't do this without the dedicated staff. Let me say that one more time. We can't do this without the dedicated staff. And we can't do it without friends like you who understand our mission and vision to foster greater understanding and appreciation of Iowa's African American history and culture. I hope you enjoyed this evening as much as I did. And, and, and now I'm, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. So I'm glad each and every one of you are here and, I'm, and, and supporting the African American Museum. Now, you probably noticed on your table, <laughs> There's a white envelope. Can somebody hold up one of them white envelopes? Thank you. Before you leave, please consider making a contribution that supports the operations, exhibits, programs, and special events at the museum. You can enclose a check or complete the credit card insert form inside the envelope. Board members and volunteers will come around and collect them in just a few minutes. Also, another thing. <laughs> On your way out, there is still an opportunity to participate um, in the Purple Envelope Fundraiser and also, you can purchase some museum merchandise 
at our pop-up store that's in the atrium. And finally, we look forward to your next visit to the museum for our latest temporary exhibit, Mapping Exclusion, Redlining in Iowa. And once again, don't forget those envelopes. And everyone, thank you for coming out and have a great evening.